If there's one thing we all love is a perfectly grilled steak. And I know we can all agree on this. Charcoal always makes it better. The flavor that it produces is so much superior than everything else. So today my goal is to find out is that if we can replicate that flavor without using the grill. I mean take a look at this. It's real charcoal. We use it to cook it and not to season steaks. So you know when I found this seasoning here my head started spinning. Charcoal activated seasoning? When I flip it around and take a look at the back of the label look. The first and most prominent ingredient is salt. If you've been watching my channel for a while you know that that's a big no-no for me. And the reason is they are controlling the amount of salt being poured on your steak. But hey we're gonna give this a try and let you know how good it is. And for that I'm gonna be using these three beautiful steaks. As you can see my butcher does a really good job of making them perfect. Notice that they are the same exact thickness, the same weight, and the perfect amount of intramuscular fat in all of them. Now since I have no idea if the charcoal seasoning is good, we're only going to be putting it in one steak. So the first thing we need to do is to get it seasoned. And I have worked with several different types of seasonings before. But this black one is quite weird everybody, I'm not gonna lie. I'm also concerned about the amount of salt that is being poured on the steak. It seems like it's just not gonna be enough. So to compensate, I made sure to season this thing well. As you can see, every single edge of this thing was perfectly seasoned when I was done. And hopefully this will give me the perfect seasoned steak with charcoal. Now for the other two steaks I kept the seasoning exactly the way I like it. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. At least to me that is the perfect seasoning for steaks. And here's what they look side by side. Now you tell me by the looks which one would you rather eat. Now the next thing to do is to go ahead and cook them. And for that you know I'm gonna be using sous vide. So I threw them in the bag, vacuum sealed them and they were ready for the water bath. And that was perfect because it allows me time to work on a side dish. And this one involved these beautiful mini potatoes. The first thing I like to do is to go ahead and boil them. This will cook them all the way through and get them nice and soft. As always remember to make that water nice and salty. That way we will start to season the potato. You want to boil them for 8 minutes. You want them nice and soft but not falling apart. As you can see they still hold their shape together. But if I press down, now that is exactly what I was looking for. Now the next ingredients to cook is a little bit of mushrooms. Into the pan I threw in half a stick of butter followed by four cups of white mushrooms. Season them with a good amount of salt so that they can start releasing that moisture. Once they are golden brown color like this you know you're done. Using the same exact pan throw in some white onions. To deglaze the pan throw in a little bit of water. Then add in garlic paste and all of the mushrooms we just cooked and mix it well. To deglaze the pan I like to use chicken stock. And most importantly don't let any of that fond on the bottom burn. That is the last thing you want. Once all of the chicken stock is gone, throw in the bacons followed by the potatoes. Mix it well and taste it for seasoning. Now you can stop right here and this is gonna taste incredible. However, we're gonna take it a step further and that is to add cream cheese. Remember, as always, exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below for you. As you are mixing, the cream cheese is gonna melt and coat all of the potatoes. And to thicken it up a little bit, just add some milk. This brings some creaminess to your potatoes, making them taste awesome. Finish it up with a little bit of parsley and your garlicky roasted potatoes are done. Now that was super easy to make and should pair up perfectly with that charcoal steak. Talking about that, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and cook it. I'll be throwing it in the water bath at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for 2 hours. And I cannot wait to find out how the charcoal steak is gonna taste. Let me be 100% honest with you, those little nibs potatoes, the way I made it with the creamy sauce, garlic creamy sauce, it is addicting everybody. Remember, I cooked the steaks at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 2 hours. They are ready, we are hungry and it's time to take it out. Let's do it. Who am I kidding? I'm telling you right now, this black steak, it is weird. Extremely weird. At the same time, I am very concerned on how I'm gonna put a crust on something that is already black. How can you physically see and say when it's enough and when it's not enough? Especially because I'm gonna hit it with the flamethrower. I have no idea what to expect. But we're gonna find out. The most important thing is always the taste and I'm really looking forward to it. And I know what you're thinking. I know my steaks don't look that good right now. But watch this.
All right, everybody, here we have our beautiful steaks. What do you think, Angel? You burned it, bro. <laughs> what do you mean, I burned How it, bro? How do you burn a steak and you keep it medium rare? <laughs> How do you do that? Yeah, it's perfectly burned and medium rare. That's the secret it's of CD. Medium rare and burned. <laughs> All right, obviously you can tell that this one is the control and this one is gonna be the experimental steak. So, let's go for it. And I also made a nice, wonderful, garlicky potatoes. You guys are already aware of it. Which one you wanna try first, Angel? Let's go for potato. But, what? I haven't had potato in a while. Are you, are you all right, bro? Are you have some fever or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for the potato then. Go for it. Let me know how you like it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mm. Wow. So good. <laughs> it's so soft. <laughs> it's crazy soft. It's like mashed potato, but inside of the potato. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the funny thing about it is that the skin keep it all together. You know what I mean? It feels like that consistency of yeah. mashed potato. As soon as you take a bite. As soon as you bite it, it's literally mashed potato. Complete disintegration in your mouth, everybody. If it wasn't for the skin, it would be literally mashed potato. You like it? Oh, that's good. Okay, very good. So now, here's the thing. For us to have a comparison, let's jump right into the steak. We got the regular one over here. Very first one, control steak. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, oh, this one is like special. Yeah, <laughs> it is special. Mm. What do, what's different? Nothing, salt, pepper, garlic powder, that's it. <laughs> Does it taste so much better today? So delicious, everybody. Sous vide steak is the way to go, my friend. That is amazing. I don't know if it's been a while or what, but it's... <laughs> It tastes so good. Do you right think now? we eat steak every single day, Angel? If I ate steak every day, I think I would look a little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> now let's try the burn steak, like you said it. Yeah, You're burning the steak, bro. I know, right? No love for the steak at all. Flame no throw all the way. <laughs> you ready for this? <sighs> Cheers, guys. Cheers, everybody. Hmm. I can tell immediately as soon as I put it in my mouth, it is very, very different. I'm trying to decide if I like it or not. <laughs> First of all, I will say right away, I think it's missing salt. Second of all, you burn it, but it's not really like a burn taste. It's it doesn't like, have a burn taste. <laughs> it kind of tastes like a little bit like you, you actually grilled it for a little bit, like charcoal. Really? A little bit. I don't know if I'd go for it. <laughs> if you know if you like it, you're unsure. <laughs> it's like, I can eat it. Yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. But if you're asking me, mm -hmm. between these two, which one is uh, the winner and the loser? Right. This one's the loser. Definitely. I agree 100%. So here's the deal. This one I used activated charcoal rub. So it has a little charcoal <laughs> so rub in so the... You so you drop it in the charcoal, I huh? drop, exactly. You drop it right in there. Just... <laughs> exactly. Now here's the deal. Does it taste like charcoal for you? It has a small taste of charcoal. Really? But... Well, I'm happy you said that because I don't get that at all. But it's not like, oh yeah, you grilled this. You grilled this not for hours. No, Absolutely no, no, no. not. It's a huge difference, everybody. But this is way better than this. I'm sorry. I agree 100% with Angel. The control steak is better. Here's what I will always recommend from day one. Keep your salt content separated from your rub. Some rubs have salt on them, so you cannot control the amount of salt being poured on the steak because you have to throw it in with the rub. Whenever you make your own rub at home, put the salt away from the rub and separate it. That's definitely the way to go. Yeah, I know, you went for this one again, huh? So much better. So much better, I agree so 100%. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. And if you think charcoal activated charcoal gives you a charcoaly flavor, eh. 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 <laughs> that's eh. the results. We always tell it like it it's is. It's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.